Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I am Miss Lisa, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about everything that I want to, science and math. And today we're talking about physics, and in particular, sound. Now, a couple of things first about this. One is that there'll be a part two where we'll do the math. So be sure to come back, and I'll have it real close into my calculator, and we'll do the math up close where you can see exactly what to do. The second thing is, is in this is a class primarily for homeschoolers, but if you like the way I explain things, you're welcome to be here. But if you're doing the homeschool class, and you're following along with this um, Merrill physics book, this chapter is kind of skimpy. It doesn't really have a lot in it. I have another playlist called Physical Science, and it has a sound um, video that really goes into more detail. So I recommend that you watch it also, because the what this book does is it kind of doesn't say a whole lot, but it says it in real big words. If you go watch the Physical Science one, it says more in more common vocabulary. But you need to watch this one too if you're doing the physics class, because that one has the concepts, but this one has the math. and. You know, you gotta do the math in physics class. All right, so in your book, you see a picture of a bat. Bats use sound echolocation, so that's kind of interesting. Now, let's talk about sound. Now, remember last time we talked about waves, and there were two kinds of waves. There were transverse waves that do like this, and then there's sound waves, there are compression waves that go Now, you were supposed to get a slinky. I told you, go to the Dollar Tree. They got them there for a dollar. They're plastic, they'll work. And you, you were supposed to play with your slinky. And, but of course, remember the book calls it a snakey because that slinky must be a copyrighted thing. They're not sponsoring me, but I'm telling you, go buy a slinky. They should send me some free slinkies. But anyway, you, I, you were last time you were supposed to do transverse waves and you were supposed to shake it up and down and see those waves like that. Well, now we're going to talk about sound waves. And what they do is they are like if you hold your slinky out straight and push it back and forth like this, it'll make the, the coils compress and spread across. And that compression of coils will go down the slinky. You just go like this and it'll push them down, they'll bounce off and come back again. Now, do the individual coils move? No, they don't. What is moving is energy. What the individual coils do is they vibrate as the energy goes by them. It's the same thing in the ocean. The water molecules don't move along with the wave. They just bounce up and down as the transverse wave goes by. The compression waves go back and forth this way as the compression waves goes by. Now, um, so where do the compression sound waves come from? They come from vibrations. You know, the book calls them oscillations. Fancy science talk for vibrations. And they cause the molecules, the sound will cause the air molecules or whatever the sound is moving through to compress, get closer together, and then move further apart. And as the molecules move, the sound energy goes through. And it turns out that actually the sound goes better through a solid than not quite as good through a liquid and the least good of all through a gas. And the reason why are because the particles are closer together and they can transmit that sound faster. So back in old Westerns, the wise Native American that would be there and um, the, the cowboys would be saying, how do we know the train's coming? And the wise Native American would put their ear on the tracks and be able to hear. You couldn't hear the train with your ear in the air, but you could hear it through the tracks. So that was, you know, one of the things like I remember seeing as a kid. Also, as a kid, we used to go swimming at Lake Lanier. We had a boat and you'd be, so if you've ever swum in a lake where there are boats, your, your, your head's above the water and it's just a quiet lake. Birds chirping, somebody casting a, 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 for fishing, splashing, but you go underneath the water and you can hear the boats. And you pop up thinking, I'm about to get overrun by a boat. Nope, no boat around. You're just hearing it from a long way away because the sound transfers better under the water. The other thing, um, sound transfers in all directions. When I was a kid, I used to watch the, the cartoon Aquaman. I loved it. And he would call the fish. And the sound waves would go out in circles around him. And that's how it really does. Now, I don't know that people can really talk to fish. 
Aquaman can, but um, and he would call the fish to come be his warriors. So, but sound does go in all directions in these compression waves. They're not just straight, they're in all directions and it's a bubble going around. Now sound can be directed like with a bullhorn or something and that can make it louder as you compress those waves closer. But it naturally goes out in all directions. As it moves through, eventually it gets to your ear. Your ear gathers the sound. You see how it was designed to gather the sound? It goes down into your auditory canal, the tube, that takes the sound down to your eardrum. Your eardrum vibrates. It's picked up by little, tiny little bones that transfer it to fluid that is compressed and not. To, so, and then, which is pushing on nerves the auditory nerve that takes it to your brain where it's translated. So your book goes into more detail about that. Be sure to read it, or if you're not following along with the book, I'm sure there's lots of videos about it. Go find somebody else's video. Now, remember how um, we have talked about with transverse waves, we talked about their properties. Well, compression waves have the same one, these sounds. And they have a frequency, which is how many of these compressions reach a certain time, place per second could be your ear. It has a sound speed. Now, the speed of sound is different depending on what medium it's going through. And then, like where speed of light is constant, speed of sound is not, well, speed of light does change with the medium too, but speed of light in a vacuum. Um, and then the um, lambda, this little thing that looks like a TP or an upside down wave, is the wavelength, and that's the distance between the compressions. So this is our formula, frequency equals speed over wavelength, and I'll show you how to do that math in the second video. Um, now, let's talk about another idea. It's called the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect you have heard before. You've heard ambulances pass by or motorcycles, so let's imagine a motorcycle passing by. Here it comes. <laughs> Do you know, did you hear what happened when it went by us? Let's do it again. It's not that it changed gears. It's that the pitch changed because pitch is frequency. The pitch is controlled by the frequency, and this is what's happening. Sound is not a real fast wave. It's not like light. It's just in so Sound's kind of slow. In fact, like just in a football stadium, it takes a while for the sound to, to reach you. You'll be at the Braves, watching the Braves back before COVID, and the batter will hit the ball, and you can see him hit it, but you don't hear that crack of the bat for a, a bit until it reaches your ear when you're way out in the outfield. Um, you could hear it over the loudspeaker, but naturally hearing it, it takes a while for sound to get there. Sound's pretty slow. So with this motorcycle coming at me, um, the sound, is, the motorcycle is catching up to the sound it's producing, making the sound waves closer together, making them at a higher frequency, a higher pitch. Once it passes me, the sound waves are spreading out behind it. The sound maker is going fast. The sound is not moving so fast toward me. It's at a, so they're spread out. It's at a lower pitch, a lower frequency, and you can hear it. Ambulances going by, woo, 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 as it goes on by. I always think about this one time. We were at Chick-fil-A in Douglasville, where we used to live. There's a Chick-fil-A that has no indoor dining, even before COVID. It just has where you drive throughs on both sides, like uh, Checkers. You know how Checkers hamburger places, they don't have indoor dining. You just drive through on both sides. Well, they, there's a Chick-fil-A like that, but they do have some little tables outside where you can sit and eat. So I brought my boys there. We were sitting there, and my middle boy was only about two, and I was teaching at public school, and um, he was, and we were watching the, the cars go by, and there was a motorcycle that went by, and you could really hear the Doppler effect. And it really caught Eli's eye. And when he would get real excited about cars, he'd go, 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 go. He always said it twice. I don't know why. Go, go, if it was a good one. But the funny thing is, is we're watching the cars go through the drive-thru. We're watching the cars going up and down the 
road there, 278. And um, it was so, it was amazing me to me because he would get excited and point out all the cars that he thought were cool. And they were the same exact ones that my high school boys that I taught thought were cool. And I was like, how does he know? How is he two? And he knows exactly the same ones that the high school kids like. I taught a class called Principles of Technology and I could not get a girl to take that class hardly at all. Eventually toward the end of while I was at that school, some girls would sign up. But in the beginning it was just boys and we would talk a lot about cars so I knew which ones which cars the boys thought were cool and it was the same ones that you know I thought were cool I was like how how does he know this but I guess a cool car is just a cool car and, and you and you know it or you don't right all right so that's Doppler effect now Doppler effect is also you hear about it on the weather Action 2, uh, uh, action weather Doppler radar report. What that is, is with radar, you can put it in a cloud and um, you can tell if the cloud is going towards you or away from you because of the Doppler effect. So they can tell if the clouds are rotating and that's a big deal because we live here in the South, I do, where these tornadoes come from Alabama to Georgia. That's how, that's our weather pattern. And if, and, and we're always looking to see, are the clouds spinning? If they spin, those are the ones that the tornadoes come out of and they'll be like, rotation, we've got rotation. You know, warning, go to the basement. So that's one, um, application of Doppler. Another one is that they can tell you use, use it, they, the, it's the Doppler effect of light. Light does Doppler effect too. So they look in space and they can tell if stars and planets are moving toward us or away from us, whether they're red shifted or blue shifted. And there's way more you can learn about that. That's a part of physics called astronomy. And I had a class in it in college with Dr. Bright Lowry and it was awesome. Uh, and, and we were going to go see Halley's Comet and it was supposed to be like Mark Twain says and going to go across the whole sky and it was the most disappointing thing. One little fuzzy star. I was very disappointed, but I took astronomy when, as a physics class, uh, when Halley's Comet went through and nope, wasn't great like it was when Mark Twain saw it. Um, you, that was just the luck. Okay, sound level is measured in decibels. And you need to be careful with this. There are two ways to damage your hearing. A loud noise can damage your hearing if it's all at once, but you can also damage your hearing if it's a kind of loud noise for a long time. So you need to be careful with your hearing. Um, the, in, in your book, and if you're not following with this book on the internet, there are things that show you where, what l sound level your hearing gets damaged at, and it's really much lower than you would think it would be. So I say go to those concerts. My uh, my husband was a musician when we first got married, and we went to, he was in lots of concerts, and I went to lots of concerts. And I like a good loud concert where you can feel the music. It's very exciting. But wear earplugs, feel the music, but don't hear it too loud. Don't damage your hearing. A lot of these guys I knew who were in these bands in the 80s, they're deaf now. I mean, they're, they can hear, but their hearing has been damaged. And, it, you know, music was so important to them. And now, you know, something that gave them so much joy, part of it's gone because they, they let their hearing got damaged by all that loud music. So when your mom says, turn it down. Also, the, the earbuds are a problem. It's The sound is too close to your ears for too long and too loud is starting to damage people's hearing. So really, you know, be careful with that and make sure you're listening at a sound level, uh, at, at a sound level that is safe. Now the lab that the book has for you to do for this chapter is you're supposed to put a glass tube in a graduate cylinder and change the height of it and use a tuning fork and hear how the, as you change the length of the graduated cylinder, it changes the tone. Too much science equipment, too specific. I'm gonna tell you how to do it instead. What I want you to do is I want you to get eight identical glass bottles, either go to Kroger and buy some Coke or root beer. They've got one little part where they've got the glass bottles and you need eight of them. And it's like, yay, hey, mom, we're gonna go buy some soda. This is gonna be great. Maybe your parents drink beer out of glass bottles. I don't care where you get the bottles. Just get some glass bottles, get eight of them, they're identical. And then I want you to put water in them at different levels. You're gonna blow across the top like this 
and it will make a sound. And I want you to adjust the water until you've got musical notes. And then I want you to play a song. You can play uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is an easy one. Do Re Mi, go for it. If you don't understand the instructions I've given, there are YouTube videos out there of people doing this. I want you to do it. I want you to learn how to blow over a bottle and make a musical note. It's fun, part of growing up. Every kid needs to learn how to do this. That's what I want you to do instead. Don't want you to bother with a glass, a uh, glass little uh, tube that could get broken. Um, so now we want to talk a little bit about music. So, which kind of leads into it. So how musical instruments work is they work by vibrations. So like on a guitar, you pluck the string, it vibrates. It, with a, if it's a brass instrument, you blow into it and the brass instrument blotates, <laughs> vibrates. And um, that's where the primary music comes from. But that's not the whole picture. What causes music is not just that primary vibration. It's that the musical instrument itself also vibrates like you pluck the string but then the wooden part of the guitar also vibrates you um there there are, you, you hit a drum the drum head vibrates but also so does the metal part that is encasing it though it they pick up the vibration and they vibrate too it's an idea called resonance and it's that things have natural points that they vibrate and if they're near something else that's vibrating they'll vibrate too you've seen it at the swing set one person starts swinging on a swing and before you know it the swing next to them will start swinging with nobody in it it's not a ghost it's that the vibrations went along the swing set to that other swing and it picked up the vibrations things have a natural point they vibrate at um, there's a thing where you can sing the right note at a glass and if you get its natural vibration its resonance it will start vibrating very much and glasses aren't really made to vibrate and they can shatter mythbusters does it so you, you should look up that video they get a rock star you know ah, to sing at it and i think it cuts his lip so go watch that one but it's always you know supposed to be an opera singer oh, sing it high and it'll break the glass um a long time ago one of the first cars i ever drove was my dad's classic car he had it was a 60s dodge dart white um beautiful baby blue interior three on the tree what that meant was is you had to shift gears but instead of it being down here you did it around here so it had first second third gear and reverse and but that car had a lot uh, it had a natural vibration so i would be driving it on the interstate um 285 goes around atlanta i'd be driving on that and if you hit like about 52 in that thing you would hit its natural resonance you would hit its point of vibration and it would just start shaking like it was going to come apart so you'd floor it and get over that hump of vibration as fast as you could so you could get up to about 57 and then be all right but it would always scare me to death because i'd be driving and then suddenly i'd hit the where it just start shaking i'm like hey, this car is going to shake itself apart in the middle of 285 and i'm going to die but i didn't instead it it got a uh, hit i was in gifted ed and uh, we went on a field trip to Europe. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. And on the way to the airport, somebody hit my dad in the parking lot. And it wasn't dad's fault. It was their fault. And totaled the Dodge Dart. And it was such a sad thing that got totaled. And I was like, I'm not going to make it to the airport. But mom came when we made it to the airport. But I got to go to Europe. Now, another thing about this that leads sort of toward the gifted class thing, too, was um, another thing about music is... Music can be pleasing, can be considered, sounds can be considered pleasing or displeasing to the ear. And it's really just taste. If, um, if something is considered pleasing, let me look real quick and see if I hit all these points here. Uh, but anyway, if something is considered pleasing, it's called consonant. If it is displeasing, it's discord. So if there is this, if, if you think that something sounds bad, then it is discord and it is not considered pleasing. Um, and it's really taste. You know, some people will hear some punk rock and say, oh, that's great music. And other people are like, no, that's just noise that is not pleasing and what i always think about is when i was in gifted ed we these 
this one little group of us were labeled and then we were in class together starting from sixth grade through 12th grade and you know every day we'd see each other because we always had gifted ed and there was this one boy that was in gifted ed all those years and it, we were about 10th grade and we were doing some thing where we were going to go on a field trip to go see the symphony in atlanta and there was this one boy he's like i'm not going and we we're like what you know did you get your permission slip signed no i'm not going well why not and he said because i hate violin they just screech and sound terrible. I am not going to go listen to violins. <laughs> and I remember, and you know, in that class, we all tried to like outsmart each other and stuff and to admit that you don't like classical music and that you don't like violins. I sort of admired Rick. His name was Rick. I admired Rick for being so bold to just be himself and say, I don't like violins and I'm not going to the symphony. Well, I like violins and I went to the symphony and thought it was fun. But uh, there was this girl who was in the gifted ed too and she had a big crush on him. And But she loved classical music and that really was a, a blow to uh, her crush. She was like, I don't know if I can like him anymore. He doesn't like classical music. He thinks violins are screechy. But he would not back down. She's married to someone else now. I'm sure he is too. It's all okay. This was 16-year-old stuff. Long Ancient history under the bridge. All right. So let's see. Did we talk about everything here? Okay. So with the waves we talked about before with the transverse waves, that you can have standing waves where you shake your slinky back and forth and it looks like that the waves look like... Uh, see how we're going to do this <laughs> like that they look like they're still and they have these places that are still those are called nodes I don't know if you can see that on there it's better in your book and you can look at diagrams but they 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 just stay right there because you've hit the right frequency for them to exactly fit the length of your slinky these are nodes and this is a standing wave and that's where a lot of musical instruments like pipe organs and things like that they have the pipes the exact right length for these standing waves and, and the nodes you also see it on guitars with the strings the where the frets are or where the nodes are so this idea of standing waves and nodes are very important to music there are lots of careers in music you could be a sound engineer you can design places for sound because you want the sound to be good everywhere if you're having a concert you don't want there to be a place where remember how we learned how the waves can cancel each other out you don't want there to be a seat where the waves cancel each other out and the people can't hear because they wouldn't want to pay for those tickets so there's all kinds of sound careers sound engineers and things like that my husband actually has a degree in that he went to uh, the Atlanta College of Art and has a degree in um, sound engineering is one of one of his many degrees he's been to college a lot and done a lot of things he's got one in music business he's got a degree in computers theology so a lot of, lot of degrees the boys had some book learning all right but not science he doesn't know about science so there's something I know he doesn't all right so we talked about how ears work um, we're going to talk about how frequencies are added and that is all we've talked a little bit more about music there um, uh, one last thing about music so it's not just the primary vibration it's there is something called the quality of music and it comes from the other parts of the instrument vibrating so um, that gives us tones and undertones and harmonics and all of that is part of what is pleasing now you can get a whole degree in this it's called music theory and it's why certain chords can be made and why these sounds are pleasing together and um i don't really know much about music i learned how to play guitar and then i quit <laughs> now my children are all musical my husband is musical not me so i can just show you the math so come back for the next video and we'll do the math I can do that. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and remember, science is great.